Good morning, I'm Ayana, and on behalf of Pastor Lee and your No Walls family, welcome back to No Walls. It's the month of March, which is often associated with luck because of St. Patrick's Day. But we believe in the favor of God, as declared in Psalms 9017, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And in Ephesians 1.11, in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. May you always see the favor of God working in your lives. Again, welcome to No Walls as we take this month to celebrate God's favor. We're very glad that you're here. Welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the studies are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, never video. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I am so, 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 so excited and happy to be back and I'm happy that you are worshiping with us this Sunday. Um, I think as I stated before, I took a small break to really be out there and doing the work of Christ, um, that we would be celebrating this month is our one year of being online. Um, and I hope that you guys have grown over the past year. I hope that something that you have heard, um, you've been able to share with other people. And so I'm so grateful to that. Um, happy Sunday goes out to all of my uh, young adults and my college students. Um, and happy Wednesday goes out to my littlest viewer who still watches No Walls every Wednesday. Um, so today, before I start, let me just say thank you so much. Um, to my children, to Ryan, who has led us in worship um, the past two Sundays. Um, thank you so much to Ayana, who is definitely on the No Walls team. I appreciate you. To my son, Trey, thank you so much. Um, he kind of brought it home for me personally um, when he talked about, you know, especially in Jeremiah 29, 11, when we're like, you know, um, I know the, the plans I have for you and they are plans to prosper you. And sometimes we look at prosper as give, 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 when really prosper, he was saying, um, is produce, 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 like you will be productive. Um, it's more like what you will give out than what you will receive. And so he opened my eyes. And as always to Reverend Melissa, um, thank you so much for um, just, you know, exposing a weakness and letting us know that the Lord has throat punched you because <laughs> I know I've gotten several. Um, and so thank you so much for sharing that. And I hope that that message blessed so many of you to um, just to stop and, and realize that God is sending people our way for us to minister, not to get angry with them, not to judge them, but to be patient with them and to be loving uh, and show uh, through what we say or do who he is. Um, so thank you so much, um, Reverend Melissa, for that. Um, before we start today, I'm so excited. Um, one of my good friends agreed to join us this morning and to lead us in worship. So I'll just let him take it away. <laughs> Pastor Lee, Rudy Curris here. I'd like to personally thank you for the love, support, and uh, encouragement that you and your ministry continue to show me. Um, it means the world. Uh, some of you guys may or may not know, but my latest single, I Belong Here, recently top the billboard charts coming in at the number one spot on the gospel airplay charts for two consecutive weeks which was amazing to me but god is so good that on that second week uh, i also landed the number one uh, gospel songwriter position as well on the billboard charts um, but even beyond the accolades um, even beyond the achievements i'm just grateful that god would give me such a timely message as i belong here the song speaks to so many people and i know that we're in uh easter season that may not look like any easter season that we've been in before but i want to encourage you as we uh begin to worship together 
that no matter what you're going through, I know we've all experienced loss during this global pandemic in some way, shape or form. But God is still God. He's the God of yesterday, today. He's the God before the pandemic and he'll be God after the pandemic is gone. And so I just want you to know that there's a call and a purpose on your life and that that call is still relevant, that your purpose is still real and is significant and you're making an impact for the kingdom. And so I just want you to know that you are loved. There is a place for you. There is a place for me in the body of Christ and we belong here. a place for me there is a place for me there is a place for me in the body of Christ yes there is a place for me there is a place for me there is a place for you and me in the body of Christ and I belong say that let's lift that up there is a place there is a place for me there is a place there's a place for me there is a place for me in the body in the body of Christ can we sing it again say there is a place for me yeah. there is a place for me there is a place for me of Christ and I belong here yeah yeah hey and I want somebody out there to know that you belong here yeah and I'm not going nowhere I belong here even in the midst of a global pandemic I belong This may be my favorite part of the song, y'all. For somebody like you to love somebody like me. For somebody like you just to include me. You could have left me out, but you wouldn't have it that way. Said I belong here, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm here to encourage somebody that you belong here. You know what? God has not forgotten about you and your dreams. You belong here. Oh, God is a faithful God. You belong here. Oh, yes, you do. That saved a wretch like me. I, I was was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see that there is a place for you. There is a place for me. There is a place for you and me in the body of Christ. So we say thank you, Lord. Can y'all help me say that? Say thank you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. I 
welcome to say I just want to say thank you Lord and I, I just want to say you made a you made a way I know somebody knows what I'm talking about you made a way when I was down and out you made this morning and started me on my way. Thank you for putting food on my table and clothes on my back. Somebody was sick and the doctor said you wouldn't get well. But you know that God is a healer. You ought to tell him thank you. I've got a reason now. You want to tell him thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I owe you a thank you, Lord. Now, somebody give God glory. If you're grateful, somebody tell him thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping my mind, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Like, like, yes, like, okay, God, come on, oh, wow, um, it's hard like i probably <laughs> i probably should have saved him for the end well let me just say um he and i share um, a liaison that connects us together and i want to tell her thank you so much um and i did not get her permission to say her name so i won't say her name but she knows who she is and i love you and i thank you so much for doing that and to you rudy may god continue to enlarge your territory and bless you and give you so much that you deserve. And uh, from me to you, Rudy, thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us, for being in the will of God and for being anointed and following um, the call on your life. I appreciate you so much uh, for being with us this morning. All right, so I'm going to jump right into the word. Um, familiar scripture. I really wish I could read the whole chapter, um, but we don't have that much time. So I'm going to read a couple of passages, and then I'm going to tell you what our focus verse is. And then I'll tell you what uh, our subject is. So it's coming out of Romans 8, which everybody loves Romans 8. And um, I've ministered in Romans 8 before. I think Trey has ministered, like, like Reverend Melissa, like, if you go to church, you've heard Romans 8 ministered in some kind of way. Um, but we're going to do verses um, 14 through 17, and then I'm going to skip all the way to the end of Romans 8. But I will talk about the whole chapter. Romans 8 and 14 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs <laughs> with Christ. If we indeed, if indeed we share in his sufferings, God be able to share in his sufferings. No, we don't want to share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And then we're going to skip all the way down um, to the end to uh, starting with verse 31. 
and I'm going to go all the way to the end, actually, to verse 39. 31 says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So our focus verse is going to be Romans 8 verse 37 that says no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us more than conquerors yes reverend melissa read this scripture last week i believe and um i actually it has been like marinating on my spirit for uh a long time <laughs> my daughter did a bible study um, and I happened to be on it by accident. I wasn't supposed to be on it because it's really for, um, college age, young adults. Um, but it just so happened I was listening and she emphasized the words more than, and it was really good Bible study. And I, you know, Tess was like, Oh girl, go ahead. You better preach that. You know, you're going to say that. And it was really, really good Bible study. But the words more than when I, when the, when the uh, Bible study was over, they pierced my core. And I was like, more than, yeah. Oh, you know what? More than my mom's a math uh, teacher. She's a retired math teacher. Um, and more than, you know, it means greater than, it's bigger than, it's beyond. Um, and so this scripture is saying we are more than conquerors, right? It's saying we are more, you know, we win. We win because Jesus won. <laughs> That's why we win. Like the only reason why we win is because we're winning because Jesus won. God won. Um, he died on the cross for our sins and he got up. It says more than just the fact that he died for our sins. It, it not, yeah, he died for our sins. And yes, his shed blood uh, we need. Uh, but more than that, he got up. So, so he's victorious. And so because he's victorious, we are victorious. And we are more than just victorious. We are more than conquerors. We are winners. We are conquerors. We are victorious. But but we're more than that. So the craziest thing is um, our uh, uh, message, since since it's good to give things a title, um, is going to be Ross Cockrell. I know, crazy, huh? <laughs> and I'm probably mispronouncing it, but Ross Cockrell. That's our subject for today. Um, and I know you're probably thinking you stayed out a little too long. <laughs> that name is not in the word of God. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not. It's, he was not an angel, like, you know, or, or a disciple or anything. No, no, no. But, but just if you, if you have just a few minutes, I'm not going to be long today at all, but if you just have a few minutes to stay with me, you're going to be like, Oh, Ross Cockrell. I got it. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm an Atlanta Falcons fan. I always will be. They, you know, don't care what the record is. That's, that's who I am. I'm not fair weathered. I don't jump ship. I am an Atlanta Falcons fan wholeheartedly. Um, and if you don't like football, don't worry. I'm not going to talk about, you know, what a first down is and all the other stuff. But just stay with me because this is really the way that God lays this out for me to fully understand more than conquerors. You'll get it. Um, but, 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 so since, you know, uh, we had a little bit of trouble, <laughs> don't, we had to switch coaches, you know, the whole thing. So, um, I didn't jump ship like I'm not a Falcons fan, but I had to jump ship to cheer for somebody. Now, um, 
and God has forgiven me for this. I have um, always, <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is going to sound so bad and I'm so sorry. I've kind of always hated um, Tom Brady. Hated the Patriots. Hated Tom Brady. Just pure hate. Oh, you think you're just so good. I don't care you got 50,000 rings. You're not good. Just because you've won all these Super Bowls. <laughs> just because you've thrown all these touchdown passes. You're not the best. <laughs> that was me. Hated Tom Brady. Pure. Don't say his name. Don't say his name. Don't say TB. Don't say Belichick. Don't say Patriots. I don't want to see red, gray, blue. I don't. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. Um, yes, Tom Brady hurt my feelings when the Falcons had an opportunity to win and they, we messed up. They won. I, yes, feelings hurt. Um, so no, um, hate it, Tom Brady. Hate it. Pure hate. Um, one day I got the opportunity though, by chance to watch, um, his story, um, on ESPN and I saw how, um, forget who he is or if he's nice or not or anything like that, but I just saw how he wasn't chosen the best. As a matter of fact, and I could have this number wrong, I don't think it's 99, I'm pretty sure he was chosen in the draft, he was player 199. Like, you're not going to get chosen. I mean, you know, good job at Michigan, I think, but, but, but you're not that great. So, you know, whatever, out of college. And so Tom Brady comes. I'm not sure. I want to say Bledsoe was the quarterback at the time. Uh, Tom Brady, you're nothing more than a backup. That's who you are. You're a backup quarterback. I think Bledsoe gets hurt and Brady gets a chance. And Brady was serving in his role when he was in college and now in the NFL. He was a backup initially in both situations. You're just the backup. We, you got to come to practice. You got to do everything everybody else is doing. But just in case, because just in case, if our quarterback, if the starter, if the star, if the person who we chose gets hurt, we're going to need somebody to step in. So you got to practice. You got to be here. You got to act like you are the quarterback, but you're not. So don't get ahead of yourself. He didn't get ahead of himself. He stayed right where he was and he practiced and he did everything he was supposed to do and he studied and he did, he, he, he did it. He did what, what my sister has been really, really pushing into my core. Do everything, everything that you do. Do it as though you're working for God. Don't complain. Don't grumble. Don't talk about anything. Just do everything, whatever job it is, whatever task it is, do it as though you're working for the Lord and watch him move. Okay, and I'm not saying Tom Brady is a Christian, loves Jesus Christ, because I don't know. I know he's Catholic, but I don't know anything about Tom Brady as it relates to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know. But I'm saying that's how he uh, did his backup position. He did it well. And then they called his number. And then he became the Tom Brady that we learned to hate. <laughs> Why are you winning? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay. So, Tom Brady, fast forward to 2019. Now, he's been a patriot all this time. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there because he's just one of the characters in this story. So, Tom Brady, they say he's the greatest quarterback of all times based on his stats, based on his wins, based on everything. You got all these Super Bowl rings. You got to be the greatest quarterback. We don't have any other measurements, whether we like you or not, whether you're built the way we want you to be built or not, whether you have uh, firing a, a team that fires on all cylinders, uh, your supporting cast is great. Doesn't matter. Based on your stats, you're the greatest. Here comes this kid, Patrick Mahomes. Love, love. Watch all the State Farm commercials and like, yes, love him. Watch all his games, love him. Love how he passes. Love that his passes are not normal. <laughs> he does whatever it takes to get the ball to you. He will shoot a jump shot just to get the ball to you. It doesn't matter. We're going to win and we're going to win at all costs. So, so enters Patrick Mahomes. He's the new guy. He's the new kid on the block. He is it. He is going to be the next generation. He is going to be a better version of Tom Brady. That's just who he is. He's popular. He's everything. Here he comes. And I love him. I love Patrick Mahomes. Great, 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 great football player. Um, won the Super Bowl last year. Super Bowl champions. Um, and this year, in the midst of COVID, 
or last year, 2020, they were firing on all cylinders. I think um, their record was like 14 and two and, and uh, so they're, they are they are running the board. Like this is it, they are going to, the, there's no question. There's no, there's no question. The current Super Bowl champions, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes and his team, they're, they are going back to the Super Bowl. And you know that at the start of the season, there's no questions about that. The question is, who are they gonna play against? Well, there's this guy, so stay with me. So now you know Tom Brady, you got this new kid, Mahomes, and everybody's comparing the two. And I will tell you that Patrick Mahomes was favored to win this game. He was favored to win. And the reason why he was favored to win this game is A, he's much younger <laughs> than Tom Brady. He runs better than Tom Brady. I don't even know if Tom Brady really, really, really runs or whatever you wanna call that he does. Patrick Mahomes is supposed to win. If you look at the numbers, yes, Tom Brady has started in more games because he's older. He's played longer. Um, he's thrown more passes. You know why? He's played longer. And all of his numbers are higher than Patrick Mahomes. But when you look at percentages, no. Mahomes is the better quarterback. He, his pass percentage is better. Everything is better. His touchdowns better, better percentage. When you look at percentages, Mahomes is a better quarterback than Tom Brady. So Tom Brady is not even in the conversation this year, okay? So let me back up before we get to the Super Bowl, what happened. You have this old guy, and I'm so sorry to call him old, but I have to say it because in football years, he's old. He's really young, but in football years, they consider it to be old. You have this old guy. His name is Bruce Arians. He was a coach. In 2017, he retired. He was a head coach maybe for like five years. I mean, he was an offensive coordinator for most of his career, head coach for like five, maybe, okay? His name is Bruce Arians. Basically, I don't wanna say he's a nobody, but he's not really like, you know, Belichick. You know, he's not like Andy Reid. He's not like a football coach that you just go, oh yeah, that's it, no, 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 this is Bruce Arians. And he retires in 2017 and probably did so because, you know, he was older, yes. Go do something else. Go do something that's less stressful. And <clears throat> he becomes an analyst. So he's a sports analyst. He's on TV. And he is Bruce Arians, a sports analyst. And great. You don't have any Super Bowls. You're, you're just nobody. I mean, not to be mean, but I'm just trying to put it into perspective. So you're Bruce Arians and you're older and you're gone. You're done. Football is in your past. But in 2019, I have, for some ridiculous reason, in 2019, Bruce Arians returns to football in January at the start of the year in 2019. I'm going to show you what happens in 2019. In the start of the year, in, in the start of 2019, Bruce Arians returns to football as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Why? I do not know. <laughs> oh, who knows? Why? Why did you come out of retirement for that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. But okay, well, knock yourself out. So he becomes a head coach. He's still older. The oldest one, he, he, yeah, and he's coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Dude, y'all don't have a chance. Sorry, Tampa Bay. My brother-in-law is a huge Tampa Bay fan, and I'm thinking, y'all can forget it. <laughs> I mean, we're having troubles of our own, but y'all went and got Bruce Arians out of retirement. Okay, whatever. So he comes along at the start in January of 2019. So after Bruce Arians is now the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in January of 2019, all right? Here's what's happening in other places <laughs> in 2019. You have this guy, Antonio Brown, the, the highest paid wide receiver playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers, signed for a five-year contract. It's not supposed to end till 2021. And the Steelers go, hey, we want to trade you. Huh? <laughs> what? So Antonio Brown, phenomenal wide receiver, highest paid wide receiver, is now in trouble because now he's no longer going to be with the Steelers. And, and you know, I hate to admit it, but the Steelers are pretty good. I mean, they have a great team. And so he's not going to be with them anymore. And, of course, he's not the world's nicest, sweetest, greatest person, not someone that you want your children to follow in his footsteps. Um, his mouth is out of control, temper out of control. He's had to apologize publicly and apologize to his teammates. And just, you know, one thing after another, um, you know, it, it just gets crazy. Um, so that's happening in 2019. So you have Antonio Brown, great wide receiver, 
his world is being turned upside down. In August of 2019, well, and then in March of 2019, Gronkowski decides, I'm done. I'm retired. Young guy. Young, very young. I don't want to play the sport anymore. I'm good. My mental health is more important, and I'm out. That's Gronkowski. So you have Bruce Arians, who's just returning, but you have all these players who are now losing, who are being moved around, who are quitting, and now here comes Tom Brady, and he's been a patriot forever. And in August of 2019, Belichick is like, we are not going to extend your contract. Like, we are done with you, Tom. Like, this is it. Could you take it or leave it? And this is the point that I started pulling for Tom Brady. He says, then I'll leave it. I know it sounds arrogant and, you know, whatever. But Tom Brady was saying something that God wants us to start believing in saying. Tom Brady was basically saying, I know my worth. Like, like you see me. I know what you see. I know you see age. And I know you see Patrick Mahomes. I'm like in all these other young quarterbacks. I get it. But I know my worth. I know my ability. I know what I can still do. And you may say, yeah, but but you don't understand. I've done this, 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 and this, and 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 you know, whatever. But you gotta still know that you're worth it. You're worth what Jesus did on the cross. You're still worth it. No matter your age, no matter what people say to you, you are still worth it. And Tom Brady, he made a decision. In March, March 17th uh, of last year, Tom Brady says, all right, well then I'm out. As, as much as I've enjoyed playing here, as much as I've won here, you know, Belichick and I run the table. I've got all these rings. Um, I'm Tom Brady. I'm out. And I will start over. And three days later. <laughs> it's true. Three days later. Three days later, Tom Brady signs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Under Bruce Arians, the old coach, the Tampa Bay can... Come on, y'all. Bruce Arians, old coach. Now, they have an old quarterback, two washed up people, in theory. I mean, they're not going to win. You can't win. You cannot win with those two people. Tom Brady signs March 20th, goes to Tampa Bay and says, listen, if you want to win, I got a friend. <laughs> I know somebody. <laughs> Go get Rob Gronkowski. He's in retirement, but he's still under the Patriots, and they will transfer him. They will trade him here. You got to trade and get Gronk. Go get, we got Bruce out of retirement. <laughs> go get him out of retirement. You know what you do? You go get a guy who hasn't played for a year out of retirement. Y'all trying to lose. <laughs> you got old coach, old quarterback. You ain't got a guy who ain't played for a year out of retirement. Why? Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you train the summer, whatever. And then here's this guy. Antonio Brown. <laughs> Antonio Brown gets a chance to uh, go. I think it was the Giants. It may have been the Patriots, but he he goes and he looks at the Giants. This is in October of 2020. So the, so the season has already started. In October, Antonio Brown shows up. He's like, yeah, no thanks. And Antonio Brown. Now, keep in mind, now, he's had injuries. So, I mean, you might be the highest paid, but I get it. I mean, like, now you're going to go join this team. <laughs> and so this guy, this wide receiver, decides to jump on board with the Buccaneers in October. And the reason why I'm mentioning them is because I'm just showing you how how these different people come from different backgrounds. and Because in Romans 8, in Romans 8, within, in the middle of what I read today, in Romans 8, it says, for we know all these things work together. Now, I'm not comparing these guys, and I'm not comparing, you know, Jesus spoke in parables so that it could be made plain, but I'm just showing you how all these little decisions individually were working together for good. 
and uh, yeah, so he joins the team. Um, and so they're not favorite to do anything really. As a matter of fact, they had to win a wild card game, um, and then they had to win the division, and then they made it to the Super Bowl to win the Super Bowl. Um, so they make it to uh, the Super Bowl. They win the wild card game. And when they win the wild card game, I did not know this. This is insane to me. Like, my brain can't get around it. In addition to their check, they get a bonus. So they get more money just for winning the wild card game. Then when they get to, like, the division championship, like, like postseason games, every time you win a postseason game, I mean, once the season is over, you get another check, an extra check, a bonus. And then when you win the Super Bowl, you get another check and you get a Super Bowl ring. And normally, if you're not in COVID, you get this big parade and you get all these other offers and all these other things. And then when you look up your bio, it's added to your bio, your Super Bowl champion. Tom Brady, and, and, and I'll, give, I'll give all of my uh, fellow Patrick Mahomes fans this. Um, yes, he was um, dealing with an injury during that game. Yes, um, the officials, you know, called a bunch of unfair calls. Like, like I will totally give you that. I will. Um, but the Tampa Bay defense was not that bad. And Tampa Bay, I, I picked them to win. <laughs> My family actually made me watch the game on the porch. But it was okay. Um, but, but I just felt like... Um, Tom Brady needed to win because sometimes you get tired of hearing people say what you can't do because of your age or what you can't do because of an ailment or a disability or a problem or your past, something that happened in your past. And sometimes you just want to prove to people to stop reminding me that I'm old. Stop reminding me that that's what I used to be. Stop telling me what I did. I want you to know that I can and I can do it because of God. So, so, so that's, that's, that's all well and good. And so you have this Tampa Bay team and they um, win. And I know our scripture today is talking about being more than conquerors. And so, you know, in this case, um, a conqueror is a winner. Um, and even though um, Patrick Mahomes had won 14 games last season, he, he was a winner. He was a winner. He was a conqueror. He had conquered 14 games prior to the Super Bowl, right? Um, and Tom Brady had only won 11 prior to the Super Bowl. But on the Super Bowl Sunday, Tom Brady became more than just a winner. He became more than just a conqueror. He became the Super Bowl champion. And with it came all these perks and all this wonderful stuff that they got as a result of being more than just the winner. So, yeah, you win football games, but they did more than just win a football game. They won other things that came with it. I get it. So what does any of this have to do <laughs> with a Ross Cockrell? <laughs> um, Ross Cockrell is a young guy. Um, he is a cornerback um, and actually probably a very good uh, cornerback. I don't know him, never heard his name. Um, I asked some people who he was. No one knew who he was. Everybody was like, mm, never heard of him. What is it? Does he play lacrosse? <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't. Does he, does he do horseback or no? No. He is a football player and he plays in the NFL. But actually, Ross Cockrell um, comes from, I want to say Maryland. And uh, he was an all-star player in high school. And he started playing at Duke University. That's where my daughter Ryan goes. Um, she goes to Duke. And he um, played football for Duke. And he was drafted, uh, I think, in 2014, I think. Um, and then he went in the NFL draft. Um, and he was chosen, I want to say, by the Bills. And then after a year, maybe two years, just one year, then he was uh, traded off to the Bills and then traded to the Steelers. I think when he got to the Steelers is when he started making a name for himself. Um, I think to the Giants. So, like, he, in seven years... This guy has been moved around to at least five teams. At least five. 
you don't know him. I don't know him. Nobody's writing anything about him. But I think he's probably a really good player um, who, you know, probably just needs that great chance. But in 2020, he is being passed around again. And he lands on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2020. But he's on the practice squad. Then... He moves up, um, and the game that he moves up to, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers actually lose, and they are now 3-2, and two, and they move him back down to the practice squad. But then, in the nick of time, they move him back up to active on the actual team. And, yeah, if you look at his stats, they say zero all the way across. Look up his Super Bowl stats, zero. They're only zero because he didn't play. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't play in the Super Bowl <laughs> at all. I don't even know if he was dressed. Um, I do know this. I'm sure he had to show up at all the practices because his role. Rudy Son Rudy's song, There is a Place for Me in the Body of Christ. Ross Cockrell had a place on this team and his place was backup. And I talked about it earlier with Tom Brady that, yeah, you got to practice because you don't know when they're going to call your number. You don't know. You don't know when God's going to return. So you got to be doing the work of Jesus Christ. You got to be in his will because you never know when your name will be called. You You don't know. And Ross Cockrell is practicing with everybody. He's showing up at all the meetings. He's wearing the right clothes. He's wherever he's supposed to be. He travels when they need him to travel. And this kid does not get to play in the Super Bowl. His stats say zero. You can look it up. If you don't believe me, you can look up all this stuff if you don't believe me. But Ross Cockrell explains fully the scripture I read today. See, here's what happened. Um... Ross Cockrell, on his bio, it says Super Bowl champion. Why? You ain't play. <laughs> he didn't even play. But he got called the same thing. He's a Super Bowl champion because Tom Brady and Gronk and Antonio Brown and Bruce Arians won because he was on the team. He's also a Super Bowl champion. You know what that means? Um, it means he also gets a Super Bowl ring. Why? Because he was on the team. But he didn't play. It doesn't matter. The rules state that as long as you're active for at least three games prior to the Super Bowl, you get the same benefits. What is going on? Okay, so Tom Brady and Antonio Brown and Gronkowski, they all get a check at the end of the Super Bowl, a bonus extra. Remember, they're more than conquerors for $150,000. It has their name, and then the check says $150,000. Does anybody want to guess how much Ross got? A hundred and fifty thousand dollar check. Why? Because he was on the team, but he didn't play. It's okay. He was on the team. He practiced. He showed up. He did his part. He was there. He was on the team. And therefore, he gets the same benefits. He gets the same bonus. He gets the same thing that Tom Brady got. There was no difference. This scripture says that we, if we are living by the Spirit, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you get the same benefits as Jesus. You become a co-heir. You are more than just a conqueror. You're more than just entitled to, to go to heaven. You get everything. You get access to the Father. You know what else you get? You get the assurance that there is nothing that will separate you from the love of God. You also get the assurance that if God is for you, then no one can be against you. We are heirs. Wow, we didn't die on the cross. We are sinners. We are filthy. Our stats say zero. But so why do we get the same thing? Why are we co-heirs? It's because we're on the team. You got to be on the team. Ross Cockrell, I'm sure he'll get an opportunity one day. I, I prayed for him, and I pray that he gets an opportunity to really show all of us his gifts and talents that God gave him. But for right now, he can forever say, I'm a Super Bowl champion. You didn't play. It doesn't matter. I wasn't there when Jesus died on the cross. I don't even fully remember uh, the day I felt his forgiveness just overflow. I don't know the date and the time, but I know one thing. I know I'm on the team. 
I know that I have a part in the body of Christ. I know that I will continue to do what I do, what God has called me to do and asked me to do, no matter what people say. See, they weren't favored to win. <laughs> but we're favored, y'all. It's never what it looks like. It looked like Mahomes was going to win. That's what the stats said. People have counted you out because of what it looks like. But we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm Ross Cockrell. I'm going to get all the same things. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do everything as though I'm working for the Lord. I'm going to do those things because I don't know when he's going to call my name. And I, yes, I am a co-heir. And I'm more than just someone who wins. I win it all. I win everything. Everything that goes with it. It's not bad being Ross Cockrell right now. People may have laughed at him. They may have talked about him. They may have told him that he was never going to be as good as a Tom Brady or an Antonio Brown, even though he's a cornerback, different position, but you, you'll never make as much as them. Well, on Super Bowl Sunday, his check was the same. Not his regular salary check, but <laughs> his bonus check <laughs> was the same. You know what else he got? He got all the wild card uh, checks too. All the postseason checks. <laughs> that Tom Brady got, Ross got, because he was on the team. All because he was on the team. And that moment in time, all those other things were working together for Ross is good. Ross could have been like, I'm done with football. Y'all put me on another team to sit. I don't want to do this no more, but he stayed. You gotta stay in it. That scripture says, listen, you can't just share. <laughs> we can't just share in the glory of Jesus Christ. We have to also share in the sufferings. We don't wanna suffer. Why is this hard? It's part of it. If you wanna share in the glory, that means you have to share in the trouble and we've gotta start seeing trouble that way. We only wanna be the Jesus that got up <laughs> and reigns forever. That's the part of airing we want to be. But no, there was suffering. There's persecution. It's, it's not going to be just rose petals and serving Jesus. It is a difficult path, but, but the reward. Crazy thing is a lot of people on that injury reserve list, they got the same check as Tom Brady. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the Buccaneers will do. I just think it's funny that how God uses a group of misfits to show us that team was like duct taped together. Gronkowski, he made a statement. When he retired, he said, the only quarterback I will ever play for is Tom Brady. If I ever return to football, the only person I will ever come and play for. And that's why Tom Brady was able to get him out of retirement. Because he's like, you said you can play for me. Here I am. I'm in Tampa Bay. <laughs> and they did it. They did it. The only person I'll play for is Jesus. You can't have two masters. I will not serve anyone except Jesus. That's the only team that I want to be on. And if he's not on that team, I'm not on it either. Ross Cockrell. The benefits to being on the team. The benefits to being in the body of Christ. Listen, and, and I'm going to end here my my. My thumb, I, I didn't value my thumb. I hurt my thumb one day. And it hurt so bad I couldn't pick anything up, couldn't do anything. And that's the day I realized I had a thumb. I neglect my thumb, ignore my thumb, don't know I have one. But when it got hurt, I was like, ooh, I need a thumb. <laughs> we all can't preach. We all can't do the programs. We all can't do, like, 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 whatever your role is, it may be small. You, you may feel hidden, but trust me, we need you. The body of Christ wants you, and we need you. We need whatever your gifts. If it's just to pray for people, then pray for people. That's important. The body of Christ needs us all. And being on the team makes you more than just a winner. Makes you more than just a conqueror. 
there are so many benefits. There's so many benefits to serving Jesus Christ. And if you don't know who he is, I offer him to you today. You can accept him today. And you too can be on the team, not the Buccaneers. That's all you got to do something else for that. <laughs> but you can be. <laughs> you can be in the body of Christ. Whether you join no walls or not is up to you. But, but hey, being in the body of Christ is a really good place to be. Because we don't know when our name will be called. We don't know when he will return. You can go to nowallsnowwhat.com and you can go down to best decision I ever made. If you click on that, it'll help you through your journey while we're in COVID uh, restrictions and stuff like that. It'll help you on your journey. You can always reach out to me or Reverend Melissa and we will be glad to pray with you um, and for you. With that, would you please bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just saying thank you. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for what he did on the cross. Thank you, God, for adopting us and for allowing us to be co-heirs with Jesus. God, help us to walk in the royalty that, that you have given to us. Help us to know that, that we should not walk in fear, that we should walk in confidence, God. God, remind us that, yes, there will be trouble in this life, that there are sufferings in this life but that if you are for us, that no one can be against us. God, there are so many people right now who are in need of you, God. Miss Barbara, Miss Elaine, just so many people, God. Aunt Elaine, I apologize, who, who just have called on your name. Alex needs you, God. We have a family traveling to Texas to move, God. And I ask that you would bless them and bless them indeed, God. That they would arrive there safely, God. That you would do a new thing in their life. God, I thank you in advance for the answered prayers. I ask that you would be with my Aunt Diane and all of the people right now, God, who are suffering or battling from COVID and cancer and car accidents and strokes and heart, just ailments. God, I ask right now that you would go and be with them, God, and that you would heal them in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. It's about the cross. It's always about the cross, what Jesus did for us. We can never repay him, but it should compel us to serve him and to do good to other people. I love you so much. I want to say thank you again to Rudy, um, and thank you so much to Trey, Ryan, Reverend Melissa, and Ayana for y'all's help and for standing in the gap. I love you, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.